Good morning, everyone. My name is John Crone. I oversee EIA's State and Intergovernmental Outreach Program, which is sponsoring today's State Energy Portal webinar. If you have any suggestion on how EIA can improve its state and intergovernmental outreach, please don't hesitate to contact me at your convenience by sending an email to me at john.crone, which is K-R-O-H-N, at EIA.gov. Thank you for taking the time to participate in today's webinar. Over the next hour, you will learn how to better navigate the state energy portal and access EIA's wide array of state energy data on energy production, consumption, and prices. Leading our webinar today is Barbara Fishman. Barbara is the team lead for EIA's Integrated Energy Statistics Team, which manages the agency's state energy data system. Also in the room today are Alan McFarland, EIA's Manager of State Energy Profiles, and Yvonne Taylor, who serves as Manager of EIA's State Energy Data System. And without further ado, here's Barbara to help you better understand how to navigate and use EIA's State Energy Portal. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you to the State Energy Portal Workshop. We have over 44 states, one territory, and three countries signed up for today's workshop. I'm Barbara Fishman, and my team's mission is to bring together data from throughout EIA on all the different fuels, such as petroleum, natural gas, coal, and renewable energy, and all different activities, such as production and consumption. Compiling state energy data is one of our biggest and most rewarding tasks. Today I'd like to show you how easy it is to get to all of EIA's state energy data through one portal. My hope is that by the end of the hour, you'll have a good idea where to find the state data you need. We'll start on the landing page for the portal and go step-by-step step through some of the most interesting things on the state part of our website. There are two ways to explore the data. For an easy introduction to your state's energy industry and an overall view of the energy situation in your state, see the state energy profile. The state energy profiles are individual state reports that you can view online or print out in a consolidated report. We also provide useful tools for exploring and understanding the data, rankings, compare, find, and help. We'll go over each of these tools a little later. One of the things we are most excited about is our mapping system. The maps are interactive and very powerful. After we look at the state energy profiles and the data tools, we'll take you through the mapping application. If you are not able to see the webinar on your screen, you can follow along fairly closely by going through the slides in order. Now, for example, we are on slide number three, the EIA homepage. If you've been to our site before, you've probably visited the EIA homepage. Scrolling down, you can see that we have a lot to offer. But for today, let's concentrate on the states because it's a big topic. To navigate to the states from the homepage, Hover over the Geography tab and select U.S. States, which brings you to the state's homepage with the green map. This is the top half of the page. The map itself is for navigation. You can click on any state to get to that state's homepage. Another way to get to your state's homepage is to open the Change State slash Territory box and select your state from the drop-down menu. In addition to the 50 states and DC, you can also select any of the five U.S. territories, such as Puerto Rico or American Samoa. Please notice the menu bar starting with Overview and ending with Help. The menu bar will appear on each page within the State Energy Portal, and we'll go over it in detail later. To the right of the map, in the Today in Energy box, you can access the most recent articles on state energy. And by clicking on See All Articles for This State, you can see a complete list. On the lower half of the U.S. States page, which is slide five if you were looking at the slide deck, you can see state rankings for three measures of total energy, production, consumption per capita, and expenditures per capita. All of these data come from the State Energy Data System, 
a comprehensive data set with 1.6 million records. We'll look at the SEDS homepage later. For now, I'd like to point out that you can easily expand this table by selecting Display All States. And you can see the rankings of all 50 states plus DC. And you can change the sort order of the table from alphabetical by state to lowest to highest by production or any of the other measures. And it's easy to download the data as a CSV file by clicking here. There are just two more elements of the US state's homepage that I'd like to point out before we move on to a specific state landing page. On the right, there is an entry point into the US mapping system. As I mentioned, we'll be giving an extensive tour, actually just about five minutes, but still extensive, of this powerful tool later on. Finally, the video. It will provide you with a refresher of what we are going over today. It's a great option for introducing the state site to new staff members who are just learning about EIA's website, and it's delivered in a fun way. Now, from the top of the US state's homepage, let's go to a state homepage. For example, Pennsylvania. Just click on the state. And the Pennsylvania homepage is slide seven in your slide deck. We selected Pennsylvania because of its range of energy sources. You may want to make your state's homepage your browser default page, and that way you can start out in your own state whenever you come to EIA. The first thing to notice is your position on the menu bar, Overview. This is a state energy profile overview, which shows the state map in a default view. A view will show you how to change later, because it can get a little crowded with all of the map elements on it at once. To the right in the table, we show Pennsylvania's rankings in 10 key data series. You can see how all 50 states and DC rank by clicking the data series name. For example, total energy per capita. There are a lot of different ways to get to where you want to go. Scrolling down to the middle of the page, you first see the state energy profile quick facts. On August 18, we will publish updated quick facts and narratives for the final six states in this year's annual update of all 50 states, Washington, D.C., and the five territories. Final updates will be for Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, and Washington, D.C. Below the quick facts, you can find five charts. They are dynamically updated, meaning that they always show the most recent data. As you can see, they cover five different topics. There is an option to download each chart as an image file or a PDF, or to download a CSV file containing the data used in the chart. Note that the right-hand panel has some of the same features that were present on the U.S. state's landing page access to Today in Energy, and the U.S. Mapping System. I'd like to especially call your attention to the Other Resources section. This is an area where we've done a lot of outreach to the state, as you may know. It's your section. Please let us know what government organizations are important sources of energy information in your state. Note the suggestion box where we invite you to send us any links to include on this page. Back at the top of the Pennsylvania landing page, let's hover over data. The data tables always contain data for the most recent month or year for which data are available. Let's select prices, slide 12 in your packet. EIA has dozens of price data series on the website, so we've selected some of the most important ones to get you started. Let's say you were curious about the cost of electricity in the residential sector. This table shows that in April 2016 in Pennsylvania, electricity cost about 14.3 cents per kilowatt hour, somewhat above the U.S. average of 12.4 cents. Clicking on the name of the data series, in this case, residential under electricity, takes you right to the source of the data. Additional information is available at the Find More link.
Last week, we expanded the environment section of the data table. You can now see renewable energy capacity, production and consumption, as well as the emissions data that have been here all along. The other choice under the data tab is energy estimate. This is an entryway into all of the state energy data systems shown on slide 13. SEDS is an extremely valuable and popular data set because it is comprehensive and allows for state-to-state -state comparisons because the estimates are internally consistent. They are annual data that covers fixed dimensions, concepts such as consumption and production, energy sources, petroleum, natural gas, and so on, energy sectors, such as residential, time, 1960 or 1970 through the current year, geography, states and the U.S., and the sixth dimension is units. Generally, SEDS data are reported in both physical units, such as gallons, and in British thermal units, a measure of heat content that allows different energy sources to be compared and summed. As you can see, we've recently released the 2014 estimates, and we will soon be working on the data set for 2015 and posting series as they are updated, so you can always see the most current data. Two years ago, we added a data status field. In essence, we are now providing early preliminary estimates of all SEDS data Starting in October, when we begin updating 2015 data, an entry of 2015 P in the status field will flag in-progress estimates generated during the 2015 data cycle. A look at SEDS can get complicated, and because we don't have time for it today, let's go back to the state homepage and click on Analysis, which is the final part of State Energy Profile. As I said earlier, we will publish updated quick facts and narratives, this analysis, for the final six states in this year's annual update on August 18. Each narrative has the same sections, overview, petroleum, natural gas, coal, electricity, and renewable energy. This year, for the first time, we have published endnotes keyed to the facts in the narrative. These notes are a great resource for finding out more about energy topics in your state. Ten state narratives present information about energy on tribal land. In Oklahoma, for example, you can see that information by scrolling to the end of the narrative. Back up at the top of the Pennsylvania page, you can select Print State Energy Profile and get a single unified document to save or print. It's the easiest way to get a complete and portable overview of your state. Close the tab to return to the state homepage. Now let's take a brief look at the four tools, starting on slide 16. The first tool is called ranking. Total energy consumption per capita is the default page. But there are nine other ordered lists that you can select by scrolling down. Selecting electricity under production, for example, shows that Pennsylvania was third in the nation in April 2016. That row is highlighted in yellow because we navigated here from the Pennsylvania homepage. These data are updated monthly, and you can download the data into a CSV file. One easy way to get a U.S. overview is to look at the quartile map, where states are colored according to how much electricity they generate. Each dark blue state generated more than 9.9 .9 million megawatts of electricity in April 2016. Texas was at the top with close to 33 million megawatt hours. Over on the left of the screen, clicking the arrow next to rank will reverse the order. Now you can see 
that at the other extreme, Vermont generated 152,000 megawatt hours and appears in the lightest blue color in the map at the right. The second tool we want to look at is compare. Easily accessed through the top of the menu bar and shown on slide 19 for those of you using the slide deck. When you arrive at compare from a given state page, that state is pre-selected along with the U.S. You can compare any number of states in D.C. to the U.S. and to each other. For example, you can compare Pennsylvania to some of its neighboring states, New York and New Jersey. You can rearrange the states by dragging them, and you can delete them by clicking the red X. Another option is to check all, and then click on the graphing icon to produce a bar chart like this. And then you can download the data to a CSV file. One of the most powerful tools on our website is the Find tool. It's a system based on selecting values in various filters in order to narrow your search for a particular data item in a particular format. Pennsylvania is automatically selected because we came from that home page. We can also select the fuel, natural gas, shale and tight gas, and the activity, production and processing. We can use advanced filters, such as content type, to select charts. We will then have a list of all the results meeting those criteria. If we click on one result, shale gas proof reserve, we get a detailed data table on shale gas in Pennsylvania, which is, as usual, pre-selected as shown on slide 22 in your slide deck. Going back to find and then clicking on show referring report, lets us see and select source of the data, U.S. crude oil and natural gas proof reserve. Below we can see the chart. There is a lot to explore using the find tool. Let's return to the U.S. States page and click on the Help tool. This is one of my favorite things about the State Energy Portal. With so many features in the State Energy Portal, we wanted to make it easy to remember what each section and tool does. The Help tool is available from any page in the State Energy Portal. Now we'd like to give a five-minute demonstration of some of the mapping features. For those of you using the slide deck, we've included six sample maps for future reference. To begin making an energy map, just click on any state, for example, Minnesota, and then expand the map to full screen. Then center the state in the middle of the screen and enlarge it. In this view, the state map appears in the middle, and the legend is on the right. Now let's remove all existing layers in order to start with a clean slate and turn on the state map. In the upper right corner, you can click Base Maps to open one of five possible base maps, National Geographic, satellite, street, topographical, and gray base, which we'll use for now. Once you turn off the base map selector, you can more easily see all views and map layers in the legend. At the top of the legend, the views drop-down box gives you a choice of 12 views. Let's look at biomass. Turn on the state map, and the light green circles represent biomass power plants. You can learn more about an individual plant by clicking on its symbol. 
biomass potential in each county is shown with green shading. You can find out what each shade of green represents by scrolling through the legend and opening biomass resources. Now let's look at the petroleum view, which is interesting and a little more complicated. After selecting the petroleum view, turn on the state mask. Then consult the legend to the right to identify what you are looking at by locating the check marks in the boxes. The brown circles represent petroleum power plants. The brown rectangles represent the refineries in Egan, south of St. Paul. And the triangles represent petroleum product terminals. You can also see crude oil pipelines and petroleum pipelines. Another option is to select your own layers. If you've been looking at views, you can clear the map with Remove All Layers. Turn on the state mask. As you can see, there are many different layers to choose from, and you can display different layers at the same time. You can create custom maps for any state or region or for the whole country. Using layers, you can look at congressional districts, or counties. Click those off, and then under All Power Plants, you can select Biomass Power Plant, which will be the same as we saw in the first view. You can add the solar plant, the hydroelectric plant, a coal plant in the southwest and near St. Paul, and the wind power plant. Or you can add in all of the power plants at once by selecting all power plants. If you scroll all the way to the end of the legend, you can select federal land, which includes the Bureau of Indian Affairs, and you can also select the rest of the Indian land, shown in lighter purple. You can drag the map to see more of the Great Lakes or any other area of the country. Once you've created a map you like, it's easy to download and print it using the print icon at the top of the page. You can save the file to your hard drive or close out of the map screen to return to your state home page, and from there back to the U.S. States page. And we have now completed the map demonstration. I hope you will find it helpful in creating customized maps of energy resources and infrastructure. In the future, if you are exploring the state energy portal on your own and find you have questions, you can scroll down to the bottom of any EIA web page and click on Contact Us. There you will find lists of experts on all energy topics, including state energy data. EIA analysts are ready to help you find the information you need. John? Thank you, Barbara, for that informative presentation. Now we will move to the question and answer session of today's webinar. As a reminder, if you have a question, please submit it via the question and answer box on the lower right-hand side of the WebEx platform. Now, let's get to some of the questions that you've already submitted. How can I find out which state produces the most coal? Okay, thank you. So, when we want to answer a question about rankings, which this is, the easiest way is to go to the ranking tool and select uh, coal production. And you can see that Wyoming produces the most coal, followed by West Virginia and, and uh, Kentucky and Pennsylvania. Our next question, how many nuclear power plants are there in Ohio? 
for this kind of question, there's actually a lot of different ways to answer this question on our website, but staying in the um, state portal, I like to go to the map. I like the maps anyway, so I often go to them and expand. Then what you can do is, is remove all layers, put the state mask back on, and go down to um, nuclear plants. And there you can see that in Ohio, we actually have two nuclear plants. And the reason I like to look at it on the maps is you can open up the symbol and you can see more information. And you can also see where the nuclear plants are. And you know, typically, there they are on the water because they need a lot of cooling. Thanks, Barbara. You're welcome. Our next question. I'd like to know how much energy my state consumes and how it compares to other states. OK, so this is a question about energy consumption. And for energy consumption, I usually like to go to the state energy data system because that gives the complete story about energy consumption. we open up the consumption tab, we will see a rankings option for consumption. So what you can do is you can look at your state in the far right column, total consumption. You can find your state, find how it compares to other states. And you can also look sector by sector, residential sector, commercial sector, industrial sector, and transportation sector. So it's here in State Energy Data System that you can get the complete picture of all the states for any sector and totals for consumption, production, expenditures, and also per capita consumption. Our next question, what is the format of your source data? Is all of your data available in publicly available application programming interfaces or APIs? The format of our source data is meaning the data that comes. I'll have to interpret this question a little bit. The format of our source data uh, varies quite a bit because we get data from a lot of different sources. We actually get it in some in HTML, we, we get it in Excel spreadsheets, we get it from surveys, and then we make it available in a variety of formats, PDFs, HTML pages, CSV files, and the, and the API, which John mentioned. That's data is available in the API. You can't get State Energy Portal in State Energy Profiles in the API because it's really just a summary of data throughout our website, which is available in, in different formats. Our next question is, how do I make a year-by-year -year oil and gas production graph for specific years? With that, I think I would go to the Charts, I would go to the charts function of the find tool. And if we're talking about, let's say we're talking about a particular state, I would select, I'd have to select oil production and, and natural gas production. Let's try looking at the state energy data system under production. So this is a, a display of year-by-year -year data with oil and gas production on it from Ohio. And 
that you could use it to create a chart. It would be difficult to create a very specific chart within the state energy portal, such as the one we looked at for residential electricity by state. Another way you could see oil and gas data, probably the, one of the best ways would be to look in Navigator, which is available from our homepage. Navigator is actually a very powerful tool because it shows, it's, it's easy to select the different kinds of data. It gives them over several years. You can select the span and you can also obviously see everything by state and you can look at the history and you can of course download the, download the history. And that you can also make a graph. If you're interested in graphs, actually, you can go also to our table browsers, which will make graphs for you if you pick particular series. So for oil and gas production, we could go to the monthly energy review table browser. We could get there by going to total energy down at the bottom of sources and uses. And then from there, pick the monthly energy review down under recent analysis or that's another way to pick it under data. Open up the categories. So in this case, we're looking at oil and gas production. So go to energy overview, expand it, go to primary, energy production by source and open the interactive symbol to the right. There you can see production by source for the whole, any span you want. You can select particular tables so that, you know, only particular series so only the two you want to see are shown here by we're a little bit out of the states here, so you'll have to bear with me, but there, there's a way to pick in the left. Click them off, yes, thank you. And so, and just leave natural gas and crude oil there. And we could look at annual data from 1949 to 2015. And there you see, well, nuclear electric power as well. I hope that answers your question. Our next question is a bit more specific and probably a little easier to answer. When will 2015 data be available? 20, 2015 data for state energy data system uh, will be available starting in October. We release it series, we post the entire schedule, you know, right here. Basically, the, the release year, you might call it, goes from October through June. And at the end of June, we release a complete set and all of the updates, comprehensive data release. The next question, does the map only show industrial solar power plants or does it display commercial and residential installations as well? Oh, okay. The only, the only, uh, the way we divide it, uh, the solar generation plants is, is by size. So. Most of them will be industrial. If utility scale is one megawatt or larger, that's what's shown on the map. 
And, you know, if there were to be a, a commercial application larger than that, yes, that would show on the map. But we don't show any distributed energy, as solar energy, as we call the smaller applications like rooftop solar, are not shown on the map. Our next question refers to the mapping tool again. And the question is, can I look at a group of states in a specific region, such as New England? Yes, you can, but I don't think you can apply a mask to it. I haven't tried to do that. Without being able to apply the mask, it's a, it's a little more difficult to look at, but if you center, center what you're trying to look at, um, you can display all of the layers on an entire region. So, for example, if we want to look at New England, we could expand New England to pretty much fill the view. And so whatever layers we selected would actually show up, they show up anyway for the whole United States. It's just by applying the state mask, you can look at just one state. Our next question, how can I see renewable electricity generating facilities in my state? Okay, well that's essentially those are, <clears throat> those are a group of power plants. Just using this map, we could look at Massachusetts, for example. So if we apply the state mask and enlarge Massachusetts, um, the renewable generating facilities would basically be the power plant, the biomass geothermal, which I, I doubt there's a geothermal in Massachusetts, but there's a lot of solar. Maybe we could enlarge that. Um, see it a little better. Actually, I do like to use the um the gray the gray background to really find uh you know to really be able to see what you're looking at in terms of the how many, so, so what you can see from this is basically solar and um, hydro and wind. And you can click on each one to see you know, exactly what it is. And we see some, also some biomass. Our next question is, how can I see if oil production in my state is increasing or decreasing over time? Uh, well, for that, maybe we could go to find and make a, oh, navigator. Okay, first, okay, good idea. If we go to the, I should say that I'm not answering these questions alone. Mm -hmm. I'm having a lot of help from Yvonne Taylor and Alan McFarland because there are so many different ways to get to, to our data that it, it can get confusing. But for oil production in a particular state, I think it, I think we, let's look at crude oil right there under production and see where we get. Okay, so this has a charting function and it has a set of years. So we could look at a particular state such as uh, North Dakota would be a good one. Select and go to the charting function. And if we if we select North Dakota, uh, we can see that our production is increasing quite a bit in North Dakota. And you can look at any state that same way. And you can also download the data. Our next question. Can I see a satellite image of power plants to get a sense of how big they are? I think 
I think you can. Let's try it out. Let's we'll go to the map in a satellite image. Why don't we look at Kentucky? And if we enlarge the map and then center the state, take off, remove all. Now, if we let's remove yeah mask and put on power plants only, and pick one to zoom down to. Are we in a satellite view? Not yet. Okay, and then if we zoom down to a particular power plant and keep on zooming to that biomass plant, there it is right in the middle. So if we, <laughs> we can zoom in a little more without losing it, Is and it, it, what's kind of interesting about this is sometimes you'll you'll get an address for a power plant and you can't tell exactly where it is, but by looking at it this way you can, and you can see it's right by the highway near the trees. Kind of neat application. The maps are really very popular. Speaking of the maps, our next question is also about the maps. And it asks, how can or how do you switch state masks without exiting the map tool? That's a question I haven't had before. Well, so let's look at the map and see if that's possible. We just go back to the full view. That's an interesting question. So we started out with Massachusetts. Let's go down so we can see more states. The question is, could we look at, say, Florida with a state, state mask? I don't think so. However, we will, if you would like to send your question, that question, to states at EIA.gov, I will find the answer for you. And that goes for any anybody who hasn't had their question answered precisely. If you want to send an email to states at EIA.gov or look at the final page in your packet for our contact information, we'll be happy to answer those questions. So this question might also feed into contacting our experts, Barbara, but I'll ask it anyway. How can I find how much ethane and butane are consumed annually in Pennsylvania? Is that in sense? Okay. You know, actually, I, I looked up this question yesterday. I was actually looking it up for propane. And I don't think we have those by state anywhere at EIA. EIA has uh, propane and ethane and <clears throat> normal butane and isobutane at PET level. And uh, in the state energy data system at the moment, we group everything together and call it liquefied petroleum gases. And we're trying to look for information that can improve our state allocation. So for propane, we do have much better information that comes from American Petroleum Institute. But for ethane and butane, we have improved our methodology recently. So, and if you look at our state energy data system for 2014, you will see our new methodology. So we can say that there are some estimates, but we don't produce those estimates separately. We still put everything into LPG. So if you have more questions on, on this particular, I mean, on ethane and butane, please call us. And our, our information is on the last page of the presentation. And by the way, if you have questions that are related to 
say, natural gas in particular or some data series, go down to the EIA any page and go to contact us. And if you click on contact us under subject matter experts, you can go directly to the natural gas people or the petroleum people. They would know much more than than we do. All right. Our next question is, does the state energy portal contain any historic information on the number or significant power outages due to weather? I don't know the answer to that question. I'll let Barbara answer it, but after she does answer it, it might be a good opportunity to showcase our energy disruptions mapping tool. We don't show power outages on state energy portal. If I were going to look for power outages, I would go to that map John mentioned, um, or possibly search through the Today in Energy, because they, both of those are good sources for events like that that are not data specific. It's interesting, though, that another thing we have on our website, let, let's, let's go to the electricity by hour. Oh, yeah, our brand new uh, electricity operating uh, data system tool. We just released that on Monday of this week. So there is, a, I think, a press release on that, and it's today in energy. The easiest way to get to it is probably from the home page. It's our, currently our first home page banner. This is the first hourly survey by, I, I think, by any government agency. What we, we get this data in every hour from all over the country, and we, pre, pre, we do a quality check on it, and then we present it on our web page, I think, within two hours. So to help visualize the breadth of information we get from all of the balancing authorities across the country, uh, it might be worth clicking on status maps so that people can see the individual status for each of the balancing authorities, which is right up at the top of the web page just underneath electric system operating data. So this doesn't talk about historical power outages, but, but we are hoping that it will help people who need to know the very up-to-date story on electricity. And what you can do with this tool we won't get too much into it. I encourage you to visit our YouTube page where you'll find a series of tutorial videos on what the different functionalities of the tool are and how you can use them to better understand the data and the analyses that it helps provide. But just very quickly, what you can understand here is if you were to click, for example, on that big circle that says PJM, it would bring you to the most recent data that we have for that balancing authority, and it helps show you that what their forecasted demand for the time period that you've selected and what the actual demand uh, is at that moment of time. And then it also shows you historically what that has been and how those relate to one another. So you can have a, a fairly decent overview of the operating functions of that balancing authority at that time. If you scroll back up to the top of this page, you'll see there is a, a date there that says July 27, 2016. If, for example, you were interested in a different day, perhaps one that occurred in the past, you could click on that arrow and choose uh, another day from whatever time period you might be interested in. So again, uh, we just released this tool, and I think that if you would like to learn more about how to use this particular tool, that you can, in the short term, reference those YouTube videos that we have on our website. And in order to access the YouTube videos, the easiest way to do that is to go to the home page. That's going to take you to the beta home page. You'll have to go back to EIA.gov. You could just go to the Texas Energy Profile or type in EIA.gov. And on the bottom right-hand side of the home page, you'll see our State Connected area, and this will link you to all of our social media resources, which includes YouTube. And there, the very first playlist you see are the tutorial videos on how to use the electric operating system data tool. 
Uh, and we are hoping to have that be the subject of another webinar that we will have likely in the month of August. So we have time for probably one more question. And the question that we are going to be able to entertain is, are all state data in average and not available by source, for example, by utility, and how are the averages weighted? So in the state energy data system, we pull the state level data from many, many sources. And in, in the case of state consumption, it will be the sum of all the uh, data we collected from the states, usually through a survey or census or from other sources. And for prices, it's kind of a weighted average. And the way we weight it is we sum up the numerator is price times consumption, and the denominator is consumption, summing them up. But if you want detailed data uh, at the utility level, we do have those kind of data in our, on our different pages. For example, for electricity, if you go to sources and use, go to electricity, and hover over data, go to summary or any, any other places other than the browser, then on the right-hand side, there's a gray bo uh, box that shows, if you click on more, see more, then you can see that these are our very detailed data page. And for example, power plant operating data, which is the seventh one, six one down. This would take us to the very, very detailed data by utility. Now we have uh, some similar files or uh, different tools for natural gas utility. So if you scroll on our website, talk with people in, on the contact page, then there are a lot of detailed data that you can get to. Okay. That is going to be the last question that we are going to be able to entertain during the webinar today. If we were not able to answer your question, my sincere apologies. Do please either contact the subject matter experts the way that Barbara indicated earlier, which is available again at the bottom of our website at the Contact Us link, and you can search by specific subject matter. You can also contact myself at john.crone, which is K-R-O-H-N, at EIA.gov for any general questions or for specific recommendations on how we might improve our state and intergovernmental outreach. I want to thank you all very much for participating in today's webinar. We hope that you found it useful and it will help you better navigate and use our state-level data. And as a reminder, please feel free to submit any questions to either our subject matter experts or myself if they're in regards to the state and intergovernmental outreach program. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope that you have a great day.